everybody. Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, a napkin journal tutorial. I am using this lovely daffodil waltz napkin. The napkin, the stamps, the stencil, all can be purchased from Ninny's Napkins. There's an affiliate link in the description box and a coupon code. So this napkin is actually huge. It's eight inches by eight inches, extra large size, bigger than the luncheon size. And it has these gorgeous daffodils. I'm going to be putting this on my 9 by 12 Canson Mixed Media Art Journal page that's been pre-gessoed. So the first step, as you saw me doing, was to take off the two excess white layers. Peeled that off, and then I'm water cutting the parts that I want. I did a general cut, and now I'm going in closer, getting rid of all the straight edges, and editing the parts that I want. Remember, you don't have to use the napkin as the artist of the napkin has created it. You can piece it together, and that's part of the joy and the wonder of, of using napkins, because the white parts layer, they go translucent, and when you layer them up, you can't tell where one part began and what another part ended. So I'm water cutting with my liner brush, and a little bit of water. And now I've taken another part of the napkin. So I've got two of the quadrants here. And I'm going to be doing a little bit more editing now that I'm setting up the final composition. Once you have them cut like this, you can layer it, you can turn it, you can take pictures and more easily decide what composition you want. So I'm going in and I'm cutting out parts that I don't want, and I'm basically going to set this up the way I want, the way that it fits the size of the page that I'm doing. I'm just putting a sentiment there just to get the idea of, okay, if I put a sentiment there, is there enough room? What kind, what size of sentiment can I put? What's going to look good? And I just, usually I have a few hanging around and I'm just trying it out just to see. So I'm going to, that one would fall off the page and I want to keep it whole. So I'm cutting it back and then I'll just piece it and it'll be on a shorter stem. So that's what I spend my time doing. Cutting off what I don't want piecing in what I do. And once I finalize what I like, sometimes I take pictures to see this option or that option, I'm going to glue this down with my Fluid Matte Medium. It's the Liquitex Basics brand or Liquitex Professional brand. I put down a coat of the fluid medium and then put it on the top here. Now my background, my page was gessoed, but you'll notice where I'm putting the matte medium here. I'm not putting it on all of the page and that is actually going to affect what I do next. And I'll point it out. because I couldn't figure out why I was getting what I got in a later step, but I just figured it out and it has to do with the matte medium. Where the matte medium goes is going to affect what I put on it. Now, when I put paint on it, acrylic paint, it doesn't affect it at all. After giving it a dry, I want to add some interest to my background. So I have this Stamperia stamp. It's called Words, and it's from Ninny's Napkins. And I love the scale of the letters in here. Now, I'm not putting this on a block, and I'm 
kind of holding it and just really getting parts of it stamped. I don't want this perfect. I just absolutely love it. And I'm putting the paper on there so that I don't get the stamp on top of the daffodils. This is one of the stamps that I would recommend as a good basic. You would get a lot of use out of this particular stamp. I'm putting some of the words, some of the stamp going up and down. Now I'm putting this before I put any color because I don't want this to be front and center. I want some of this peeking through and I know subsequent layers are going to knock some of this back. You can see I'm bending that stamp and I'm using archival ink, but you do need to make sure it dries before you go put any wet layers on. Now I was going to add some swirl stamps here, but I chose to wait till later, till I do, till I colorize the back. Now, instead of using acrylic paints, I decided to use my ink tense blocks. Now, ink tense blocks are ink that you can activate with water, and when they're dry, they are permanent, just like acrylic paints. But I'm choosing to use them because they are more translucent, and I don't want an opaque background. I want to see some of that stamping. And I also am going for the watercolor look. Now you could use watercolor, but watercolor, if you're doing further layers, if you put wet on there, it's going to reactivate, whereas the Inktense block does not. And I'm grabbing a brush that's wet and I'm trying to reactivate it with the brush. Not perfectly happy with how that's happening. So I'm grabbing gesso and putting that on. But when I do that, it's going to be very opaque, not a look I'm liking. So I'm grabbing a baby wipe and wiping that back. And then I decide, oh, I'm just going to activate the ink tense block with the moisture that's on the baby wipe. Now, do you see around the flowers where it's there's kind of a resist happening? That's where the gel or the fluid medium was. And it's acting as a resist, so when I take the baby wipe, it's coming up. I solved that problem, but that's why I'm getting that halo effect around it. I didn't have that problem down below where I'm activating it, because that's all gel medium. So it's all the same. So I mixed those three colors, a blue, a purple and a magenta and activating it and I'm absolutely loving the effect. This was a bit of a risk. This is something I've never done before. I wasn't sure about the colors and I'm so glad I took the chance. And if you don't take chances, you don't learn new things. You don't get surprising results. Now I'm going back in with more of the block and just deepening the color. And I'm absolutely loving the look. Now you can take that ink tense block, you can activate it with gel medium, you can activate it with gesso or water. I do have a playlist of five videos where I talk about all the uses of Inktense blocks in mixed media. They are a wonderful addition. To your stash.
Now, because that gel medium is kind of blotchy, I decided I'm going to add some stenciling, and I grabbed this screen view stencil. It's from the Crafters Workshop, and I'm using, here I'm using white gesso, and I'm stenciling on. This is pushing it back. It's muting the colors, and I'm absolutely in love with the effect that I got here. This is something I'm going to have to remember and use again. I do come in and add white paint, which is a little more opaque in some areas, just for variety. But I love, love, love this effect here. The stamping of that words stamp from Stamperia, the stencil, and using the inktense blocks with that watercolory look. Winning combination. Now, because the ink tense block was dry, it was permanent. It did not bleed through the gesso. If you have watercolor underneath that or some pigment powders, often that will bleed through and it'll discolor it, which may be an effect you like. But with ink tense blocks, you can avoid that. Now, here is a picture of where it is and the daffodils are bright and vivid enough you could have just left them and part of me wishes I had left them you didn't don't need to do this painterly effect but I decide that I am going to paint them now if you want to do that and you're a little bit leery you can do it on a piece of do a trial with leftover pieces or from that napkin but I'm going right on it and thinking, okay, you know what? It's a bit risky. I've not done this shape. And I'm coming in and I'm putting gesso and a combination of colors and ink tense blocks to shade these daffodils. I'm picking out different colors of yellow, different the orange, the red, and white gesso. And I'm globbing it on to some degree. Now I do run into some difficulties where I lose some of the detail of a couple of the daffodils. But I make it work. And again, that's part of the challenge. I think I would have, if I was doing it, I would have just done the outer petals and left that center part alone and just did a wash with the ink tense blocks. So then I would have added texture by this painterly effect on these petals that are way easier to deal with. But the secret when you're doing this painterly effect is you glob it on and you are making an abstract flower, not as precise as a picture. And when you look at it from afar, you see that. But when you're up close and personal and you're doing it, sometimes you're, you've are you got those negative thoughts in your head. And boy, I did. When, you, when it's not going right, let it dry. And I kept looking back at the napkin, at the original art, and using it as a guide for the shading and for the colorization. There, I'm adding some ink tense block, and I come back and I revisit that often. I'm not going to show you how I do all the flowers. It was a, it is a long process, and there are a lot of flowers on here. When you do paint over the napkin, you can adjust the colors that are there and tweak them to make them just right for yourself. And I love the texture that's added when you're globbing on the paint. But like I pointed out, you don't have to do this step. 
This napkin is bright enough, the, the colors are vivid enough, especially if you glue it down before you colorize the background and there's nothing, you're putting it right on the white paper. And then I come in and I'm adding some darks and some lights and I'm kind of steepling, steepling with my brush just to get that painterly type of effect. I'm trying not very hard to not be too precise. Here I'm colorizing, coming in with the paint after it's a little bit dry. The person that's looking at it knows it's going to be daffodil. So their, their eye fits in the details that need to be there. close up of the painterly effect. The outside petals here aren't done yet. Sorry, that was off, off view. So I have all of them and now I'm coming in and I'm going to add darken the green on here and I'm just going to use a couple of my ink tense blocks and my liner brush. I was rub trying to rub right on the block and then I decided I'm just going to grab some water and get a pool of ink on my desk and then I'll just paint those in. I'd keep doing that. I just, that was in a place that it was going to get wet or whatever. So I put it on a different side now that you've seen what I've done. And I'm just fitting it in. Some of these petals, some of these stems were floating before because of my composition and I paint that in. I chose not to use acrylic paint here because I just wanted that variety. These ones are kind of, they look more ethereal and they're hanging out in the background. There, I'm just painting in parts that were, stems that were floating before. And as usual, I'm using a couple shades of green. Now you'll notice the one daffodil on kind of in the middle on the left hand side, it's yellow. It really has no definition and no shading in it. And it kind of was a mess. I wasn't very happy with it. So when I start figuring out where I want the sentiment, and I chose this one from my Through the Garden, Through the Garden Gate sentiment pack, and that's also available at Nanny's Napkins, I got the idea of well, what would happen if I put it over top of this flower? It kind of blocks off my mistake, what I'm not happy with. So I play with the orientation of that. And I think that's a brilliant idea. I've never done that before. You can always cover up what you don't like. There's always a way. And if you can't, you're learning. If I was doing this again, I may 
just give it a wash with the ink tense blocks to brighten the colors. I think I'd love to use and the, another napkin or the other parts of the napkin, the daffodil one, and put this on a cradled wood panel or MDF panel and have a spring wall hanging. So when I try things out, I do it in my art journal. And because the napkins, you have more than one of the image. Once you've tried it out, learned the lesson, figured out the, how to do it, you can then go do it on the more expensive substrate. I blew up this sentiment and I'm using parts of it, I'm using bigger because I want the word flowers, bloom, and hope to stand out a little bit bolder. If I was doing this on a wooden cradle for a wall hanging, I probably would have printed this off on tissue paper and decoupage that down. I grabbed a woodless charcoal pencil here to shade around the outside. I'm using black because I wanted to tie in with the sentiment. The general's charcoal would work here as well, but it's a little bit more black, a darker black than this. And I like the softness of this. I didn't want to go extremely dark here. I didn't use acrylic paint in the floating acrylic technique because I didn't have black paint sitting on my table. I'm looking for my Secura glaze pen and I'm going to outline my sentiment. Secura glaze is a very bold black and it's dimensional and glossy. And until it dries, you can take a baby wipe and clean it up if you make a wobble. Pulling off the tape that keeps everything out of the coils. I've taken this out of my Canson Mixed Media and then I'll put it all together. I'm absolutely loving, loving, loving the bright colors of this page. But then I decide I'm going to get this stamp and I'll put the name of it in the description box below. I'm just using that one little corner and it has kind of crosshatch that matched the screen view stencil. And it, I just thought it needed a little bit more. In hindsight, if I was doing this again, I probably wouldn't put this. I loved the stamp from the words one, but I definitely be, will, will be using this little motif again. It's a tiny little detail that I think is going to add, be used on a lot of backgrounds. Always looking for some small scale motifs to use for stamping. So let's recap. Let's we started by using a napkin for the focal image. And I pieced that together and changed the composition to fit my page. I stamped with this word stamp with black archival ink. And then I applied a base coat of color. This time instead of using acrylic paints, I used my ink tense blocks. Love them gives me a great watercolor effect and I use the baby wipe to activate them. I did some stenciling with the screen view stencil and that knocked back everything and I absolutely adored it at that stage. It was the perfect combination. I painted over the focal image in a painterly effect using the napkin as the guide. Then I added a sentiment and I positioned it over 
what I didn't like. I edged the page with charcoal. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a comment. Check out the links in the description box. Follow me on Instagram. Until next time, go get creative.